Hey guys, Abe Foy here from freelearner.how. I uh, want to give you a video today about the FPGA Miner. Uh, this is a field programmable data array uh, that we talked about in the previous video. And we didn't have enough time to really go into the details of this, so I wanted to talk about this a little bit more. So this device is a, a, programmable, it's a programmable device uh, that has uh, a bunch of um, ICs and transistors and whatever else that's in there that's designed to do lots of various different functions. So you could do anything from using this to be able to turn on things um, like pumps and uh, assembly drives. And a lot of times they use these in manufacturing facilities to be able to optimize their systems. Um, it's like the next step up from a PLC. Um, it is something that's neat about this is it has the ability to program all of this in a visual GUI where you can actually use a schematic drawing to be able to program it. Uh, and you don't even have to write any code. Now, if you do know the code, you can actually write the code too, which is pretty cool. So I, I have the Arduino here. Um, so you can use this as an example. If you know anything about the Arduino, uh, this is a microcontroller that allows you to be able to use all these input and output pins uh, to be able to run it on a program. So you can uh, send a sketch to the Arduino and it will, uh, you can control the inputs and outputs to be able to do functions. Like Eric over here, uh, the, at his house, he just used this to be able to have a proximity sensor to be able to see when the car is in the driveway. Or it has temperature sensors to see, you know, what the temperature is out and it can map it over to a, um, over to a screen. And you can actually, if you have more, if, you will, if you're interested in that, we actually have a video uh, that describes how to do that. Well, the FPGA uh, is actually very similar in that, in that concept. So uh, you can actually use um, this device to be able to do all the things that the Arduino does, and it can actually do it faster and more efficiently. But we're actually going to use it for mining. So I, I'm going to bring the, the FPGA here and so you can get a closer look at what, what's going on in there. So there's four Spartan 6 processors that are on that, has onboard memory. You can see all the heat sinks there, and then this big uh, 180 um, millimeter fan up on top. Now this device was pretty state-of-the-art uh, when, when it was made in 2012. You know, it was, so this is going on, you know, six and a half years old here. Um, it's a, it's a super cool piece of technology and it's, you know, in pretty good shape. So I picked this up for a couple hundred bucks. And what's really cool about this is it's root, it still functions very well. So in our previous video, we talked about how, um, Eric's brand new NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti video card to be able to mine Bitcoin was able to hash at a rate of 330 uh, mega hashes per second at about 250 watts. This device, six years ago, was, a, was able to do Bitcoin um, at 380 mega hashes per second at 40 watts. Now I actually hooked this up and I, and I used this and I actually, it's normal drawing power is about 30 watts. So it's even a little, un, and it was still hashing at a pretty good rate. So what's pretty cool about this is um, I've used this FPGA uh, to be able to mine Blake. Now originally, I just told you, it was designed to be able to run uh, the algorithm that was programmed into it was to be able to um, do Bitcoin. And so how is it able to do Blake? Well, what, what's interesting about this, because it is programmable, all you have to do is hook it into the USB slot, load up some drivers, and then um, you need to be able to send a new bit stream to the FPGA. Just like the Arduino uses sketches to be able to program this controller, the FPGA uses bit streams to program its controller. So you use a separate, com a separate program uh, to be able to do that. Um, usually it's gonna be um, the Xilinx software uh, because it's a Xilinx processor. And you'll uh, program in a VHDL and then uh, create the code in that and then send it on to this device. And you can actually have it do anything. But in this case, we would use it for mining. And so you can take the mining uh, uh, bitstream, send it to this, program it, 
and now it is actually designed for this. You don't have to have the computer hooked up to it anymore. Uh, it will actually continue to, um, to mine, but to be able to have the interface, you'll notice that there's no network connection on this device. So you actually do need to continue to have it uh, hooked up in reality to some kind of computer, whether it be a uh, Raspberry Pi or to your computer through the USB slot here. And then you just run CC, CG Miner, CC Miner, uh, SG Miner, any of the other um, applications to be able to run on this. Now, um, because this machine is actually um, uh, a little older piece of technology, it's actually grandfathered in to all of the new um, um, mining applications that run on your computer. And the reason why is because they're really popular when all the mining applications were being made. And then once CC Miner made it, that application got forked and forked and forked and forked and forked and forked. So it's actually lingering there in the background. And so what's super cool is I downloaded a brand new version of CC Miner and SG Miner just to test it out, and this device works for it on Blink. So um, what I'm going to go through in the next um, the next uh, couple months here is I'm actually going to go through various different algorithms, and I'm going to create new bit streams for this FPGA and post the results. So uh, I hope that you guys are interested in some of the uh, the details that we have going on for that side. Uh, we're going to talk about that soon here. Okay, so that's what this device is. So this is a 2012 device. So I did look for some new FPGAs that are out on the market because a lot of times people are like, well, FPGAs, that shit's old. We don't want to use that. And, um, and you know, they look at this and like, well, you can only get 380 mega hashes on that. And that's, you know, or you can get, you know, let's say 380 mega hashes on um, Blink, right? So it's not super exciting as far as the profitability goes or this. But this is a proof of concept. You can use this for other machines. You can actually tailor several of these together. And the nice thing is because it's only 40 watts, it can run easily on pretty much any circuit that you have in the house. That ASIC miner, that runs off 220. And it doesn't run off at anything else but 220 because the machine will shut down. This sucker, 40 watts, I can run this off my computer. So what's really cool about this is there's new FPGAs that are out. So um, Eric's uh, uh, GTX 1080 Ti uh, video cards that he uses in his computer, 250 watts, 11 gigabytes of DDR5. Super awesome car, right? Well, the new FPGAs, um, they also can be uh, put on a PCI card so you can actually use the risers and set it up the same way you would use a uh, mining machine. And then you can use CCG miner to be able to attach to it that way if you wish, um, which would help with the latency because you wouldn't be going over USB. Um, or you can use them individually and have them uh, mined um, through the uh, through Raspberry Pi or something like that. But the new video, uh, the new uh, FPGAs that are out have Xilinx processors that are about 50 times faster than this Xilinx processor, and you can get them in uh, in the retail side up to 80 gigabytes of DDR5, which is really really amazing. So um, uh, they are expensive, right? This is a developmental board. This is designed for hardware engineering and, and it's gonna be expensive, but that 80 gigabytes of that means that it's gonna be able to bust through a lot of even the hardest things like script or, or NeoScript or any of those other algorithms that may be hanging out there. So anyways, um, we are gonna go through and we're going to uh, use this device to be able to do proof of concept on various different algorithms to see how much it's hashing. And then I actually have a few other FPGAs that are laying around that I'm going to test it on that have um, 256 megabytes and a gig of, a gig of memory on, on another one. So as we boost it up, I'm going to post the results and you guys will be able to see uh, what's going on. So anyways, thank you for taking the time with me. Um, I know there was a lot of detail here that that we're going through and uh, we'll see you next time and we hope that you live free each and every day. Thank you.